first of all, it's a rare, cool morning here in North Texas. So I had to uh, cop some Texas Garage swag to show off for you guys. So if you're interested in the sweater I'm wearing, plus a lot more, uh, go down in the description, hit the link, check out our store. Let's get into the car. And this week we're driving the 2021 Subaru Crosstrek, but wait, it is the Crosstrek Sport. So let's go ahead and dive in and see what that's all about. So first off, the Crosstrek is classified as a subcompact crossover. It is the successor to the Outback Sport and slots below the Forester in Subaru's lineup. So it is Subaru's entry level crossover vehicle. With that said, there are five trim levels to the Cross Sport. You have the base Cross Sport, the premium Cross Sport. Then you have the Sport, which is what we're driving here. Then you have the Limited and the Hybrid. And actually, the first Cross Sport that I ever drove was the Hybrid version. That was before I was even doing the YouTube videos. So that's a written article on TXGarage.com. Be sure to go check out TXGarage.com for a lot of written reviews, as well as news and event coverage. Lots of great stuff over there, but let's continue with the video. All right, and first off, this is a refreshed design for 2021. The Sport offers unique design bits for the exterior here. We do have specific wheel arch moldings for the Sport. They are a little bit odd, but they fit the style of the Crosstrek here. We have the Sport grille with that Subaru badge right there in the middle of the grille. This one does have fog lights in that bottom cladding there, as well as a very Subaru looking headlight and front fascia design. We have a unique dark gray wheel finish and gunmetal exterior accents. These are the sport type 17 inch alloy wheels. Standard on the sport trim, you do have side keyless access. Those roof rails are raised roof rails so that you can put more up there on the top, including a whole tent setup. You have all the gunmetal trim accessories, including the side mirrors and badges. And you can see here in the rear that Subaru badge, along with the symmetrical all-wheel drive badge. And of course the Crosstrek badge with the sport trim badge there in yellow, which you'll see in a minute is a theme with this car. And ground clearance on the Crosstrek is 8.7 inches. Very respectable for the type of vehicle this is. We'll touch more on that when we get to driving it. But before we do that, let's go ahead and pop the hatch since we're here in the back and check out the cargo volume. It does have gas struts on the hatch to keep it open. This one has a rubber mat in the floor to keep stuff from uh, moving around too much and to make it easy to clean. Cargo volume here is 20.8 cubic feet, which is very respectable. Fold those rear seats down and you're looking at 55.3 cubic feet. Definitely enough if you're going uh, camping or something, you could actually fold those down and have a bed fixed back here in the rear of this vehicle. And of course, because it's Subaru, you get a lot of accessories for dogs and stuff like that riding in this car. And before we move inside and start looking at the interior, let's first go pop the hood and check out the engine that's powering this thing. All right, so there are two different engine options in the Crosstrek. You either have the two liter boxer engine or what we're rocking here, the 2.5 liter boxer engine. I definitely prefer and recommend this one here, which you have to be in the sport trim or higher to get. This pushes 182 horsepower, 176 foot pounds of torque and is matched up to Subaru's CVT transmission. It doesn't sound like much, but for the size of vehicle here, it puts the power down pretty well. We'll check out that as we take it for a drive. And we'll also talk about the fuel economy that you get in this thing. But before we can drive it, let's first talk about the interior, starting with the rear seat. So let's go ahead and jump back there right now.
All right, guys, and back here in the rear seats, there's not much to talk about. You get the same decent materials that you get in the front. It is a three wide seat. There is no armrest back here. There's no AC vents, no controls, no charging, but I'm 6'1". This is a compact crossover and uh, I have plenty of knee room here and this seat is uh, basically as far back as the driver's seat. It's the seating position of the kids and everybody when they uh, ride up in the front with me. And my hair kind of scrapes here at the top, but uh, not a huge issue there. All in all, they're comfortable seats. If you're driving and you gotta pick up some other adults and do some driving, they won't be mad at you for sticking them back here. Probably not three adults wide, but three kids wide fit just fine. But again, nothing too fancy back here. Let's move up into that front seat. All right, guys, and up here in the front seats, much like the rear seats, even though this is a compact crossover, plenty of room, very comfortable seating position, easy to drive, nice materials. It's not real leather. It's called StarTex, so they are easy to clean. And we've got yellow stitching as well as the yellow Crosstrek uh, stitched into the seat back here. Let me go ahead and give you a full walk around of the interior, then we'll kick it on and take a look at some of the tech. So again, that is the gray star text with yellow stitching. It is the seats. We have it here on the door panel, along with some carbon fiber like trimming. We have carpeted floor mats with the sport logo and yellow stitching on them to match the rest of the interior aesthetic. The dash here also has the yellow stitching all the way around, even up on this top hood. You get this yellow metallic on the gauges, as well as here on the steering wheel. And this is a leather steering wheel with more yellow stitching here. So it's definitely a whole aesthetical vibe that carries through from the exterior to the interior. It's not my cup of tea, but uh, it looks decent enough. Along with the keyless entry, we do get push button start. Here we have the eight inch multimedia display, and this has Subaru Starlink. You get a couple of different apps, including Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integrations, and it's all relatively responsive. Definitely not too bad for the price point. This extra screen back here gives you some different readouts, including the time, temperature, miles to empty, and some of your AC and heat settings. This is a pretty nice setup, and I like that it's uh, up high on the dash. So especially the time, if you're looking for the time or something quick, you don't have to take your eyes too far off the road to look down at the screen. It's all right there. Again, just a nice touch. Below that screen, we do have redundant uh, buttons for the media and then all your AC and heat functions. You have a little shelf here for a phone or something to sit on, but it's not a wireless charger. Way back there is a USB type A plug, an auxiliary plug and an accessory power port. You do get two USB type A's, but no USB type C in this car. Further back is your gear shifter here with the leather boot and that yellow stitching again, and just a traditional gear shifter. When you put it into reverse, you do get a backup camera, no 360, but it is just a nice backup camera. Back further from that, you got your heated seat buttons, a high and a low. Nice to have heated seats, no cooled seats though. And you have your X mode button. We'll talk more about X mode as we take it for a drive. And then of course some cup holders and a nice console, again with the yellow stitching. And it's nice and soft. You still got room for your cups, but you got this nice little jet out here for more comfort. That's always appreciated. Down in that console, you, you do have pretty good amount of room. You get another two USB type A ports for charging and another accessory plug here. Moving on to that steering wheel, it is leather wrapped, does have the yellow stitching. You do have a lot of buttons on your steering wheel, including way back here, and you get paddle shifters. Now this is a CVT transmission, so you're uh, not really shifting gears with these, but we'll test them out as we drive the car. And here you get interface to your uh, infotainment system. These buttons down here set your driver information display, and here's for your cruise control and some of your eyesight features, which again, we'll talk about as we get driving the car. Taking a look at the gauges, you get two analog gauges and the center LCD screen. And of course you can flip through some different info here. 
depending on what you're wanting to see. Moving to the left side of the steering wheel, you do have a couple of buttons over here that are important. You can turn off your parking sensors, you can turn off the auto start stop feature, and you can turn off your traction control. And with that, I think that uh, brings us to the drive. So let's uh, get the camera mounted up and let's take it for a drive. All right, first off, like I said, the driving position, the comfort of the interior is really good with this vehicle. It is a smooth ride, no matter what uh, surface you're on. The acceleration with that 2.5 liter boxer engine, it's not stellar, but it's not bad either. It gets up and goes, and this isn't a race vehicle, so uh, no complaints there. It does what it needs to do. It gets you to where you need to go, and whenever you push on it and need it to be fast, it can do that too. Fuel economy here is rated at 27 miles per gallon city, 34 miles per gallon highway. During the week that I've had it, I've been averaging 24.3 miles to the gallon. We haven't done a whole lot of highway driving in this thing, mostly city driving, so that kind of makes sense. Plus, we leave it idle a little bit more while we're taking video and photography of the vehicle and uh, pushing it a little bit harder than you probably would in normal day-to-day -day life. So the 29 MPG combined that this thing is rated at, I have no doubt you'll get close to that, if not surpass it, if you do a lot more highway driving. And I would say for its segments and for having the symmetrical all-wheel drive, that's a pretty good number. And speaking of acceleration, let's go ahead and give it a quick acceleration test do a bit of a zero to 60. So we got a straight road ahead of us. Dead stop. Ready, set. Hold on. Let's turn off the uh, auto start stop. Let's give it all the chance that it has. Got it in manual shift. Ready, set, go. And 60. So that took a little bit of time. I'll put the uh, number up here, obviously. But again, not what this thing is made for. So maybe we can find an area and really show you what it is made for. And that is some off-roading. Light off-roading, but off-roading. All right, so we have a little bit of off-roadiness, basically what this thing is made for. Let's hit that X mode. You have a snow dirt mode. You have a snow mud, a deep snow mud mode. And then the SI drive, we'll go ahead and put it in uh, snow and dirt, even though this is pretty muddy out here. Let's just, uh, let's just see how it handles. So this does have the dual function X mode with hill descent control, and that is standard on the sport trim. Obviously, not too much, handling pretty well. You can see that uh, traction working for me a little bit there. Again, this is very uh, soft and muddy because we've had a lot of rain recently, but definitely nothing that this Subaru Crosstrek can't handle. And I think that little bit of off-roading perfectly uh, describes how this thing handles and what it's going for as being an off-roader. So let's get back to the road. And all of that, along with the 8.7 inches of ground clearance, really makes it something to contend with if you're looking for something to take out on the trails to go camping with, or even to have as sort of a ranch car here in Texas. It's just a great platform, which shouldn't be any shock for Subaru fans, but there's a lot of competition out there nowadays for this kind of segment, and they all talk about being activity vehicles. Subaru is not just one of the OGs at it, they are one of the best. Now, as we alluded to before, as we're looking at the steering wheel, this does have Subaru's EyeSight technology. It is a driver assist technology. Back country roads like this, you won't really get uh, the sense of what that is. So 
let's find a highway let's jump on i'll turn it all on i'll get some good camera angles of it and show you the eyesight it is a really good system even back a couple of years ago the last time i drove a subaru with the eyesight it handled itself just fine so let's jump to the highway right now All right, so we're on the highway. Let's go ahead and engage the cruise control. Set it. We can adjust our distance from the car in front of us. And you have eyesight working for you, so it basically helps you stay in between the lanes. It's a driver assist feature. It doesn't just warn you as you get out. It'll actually help nudge you and keep you in the lane. And we got everything set, so it should be working pretty well. And it is moving the steering wheel for us. Eventually, it'll tell me to put my hands back on the wheel, but it's doing a pretty good job. And this isn't just completely straight. We're hitting a little bit of a turn right now. And there, it's telling me, keep your hands on the steering wheel. So we do have control, but it is helping us out just in case we're uh, like this dude over here that just ran off into the <laughs> median. So obviously it's not a fully autonomous driving system. It's just an assist system. It's just there to save you just in case you're not fully paying attention. It'll brake for you if the person in front of you is slowing down and it'll keep you in the lanes. And again, as far as the uh, assist systems go, it's a pretty good system. Not the best, but pretty good. This guy wants to get around us so bad, but this guy beside me doesn't know what he's doing and I'm just over here messing around driving, shooting a video. All right guys, and with that, let's find a place to pull back over. Let's talk about the price and competition and then we'll wrap the video up there. All right guys, and before we wrap this video up, Let's talk quickly about the price of this vehicle and the competition out there, starting with the base price of the base Crosstrek, which is $22,245. The base Sport is $27,545. And I think it's definitely worth jumping into the Sport, especially if you're doing any of the off-roading bits, because you do get that dual mode X-Drive with hill descent only on the Sport trim. This one, the way that it's specced out with the sunroof and a little bits here and there is $29,145. And getting this vehicle under $30,000 with as capable as it is, even though it's not the nicest interior out there, I think it's pretty good. But the best way to determine that is to talk about some of the competition. So this competes with the Honda HRV, the Hyundai Kona, the Kia Seltos, and the Jeep Renegade. Now, typically my favorite out of those is the Hyundai Kona. I'm a big fan of the Kona. The Seltos, a lot of people out there are really liking. When I did my test drive of it, I wasn't too thrilled with it, but uh, but a lot of people like it, and they were sure to tell me in the comments that they really liked the vehicle. And if you're doing some light off-roading stuff, that Seltos has a great system there. The Renegade, really, you gotta get it into the Trailhawk trim of that to compete with this thing. Again, that 8.7 inch ground clearance can only be matched with the Trailhawk version of the Renegade. But at the end of the day, if I was buying a vehicle in this segment, or thinking about buying one for the kids or something like that in this segment, the Kona probably would be my first choice, and I think this Crosstrek would be my second choice. And I know there's gonna be some that we left off there, including the uh, Mazda CX-30, which is a great vehicle, and many more, but uh, we don't have time to go through all of those because it's time to wrap this thing up. Let me jump out, give you some of my final thoughts, and we'll wrap the video up there. So final thoughts here, the Crosstrek is definitely a very capable vehicle, definitely a very nice vehicle. It's been way too long since I've actually test drove one, so I'm glad to have gotten this new Sport for a week. I do know many people that own these things, including some Texas Garage staff, so I can't say too much bad about it. But even if that wasn't the case, I wouldn't say anything bad about it anyways. It is what it is. It's a great little activity vehicle. One of the best on the market that you can get in this segment, especially if you're actually looking at doing stuff like camping, hiking, anything that you're going to take it off road for. Obviously, it's not a Jeep. It's not going to do rock climbing, but it is super capable. 
With that, I hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the cross trek and uh, the video in general. Be sure to go check out TXGarage.com for more written reviews as well as news and event coverage. Go check out our merch store, link in the description. And with that, again, hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching.